Hi, this is Mr. West, and you're watching a Math Drills tutorial on multiplying and dividing fractions. Let's go ahead and get started. So we have some fractions here, lots of them, and we have some of them that are multiplying and some of them that are dividing. I'm going to show that really what we want to do is we want to get them to be all multiplying, and we're going to change the dividing ones to be multiplication because multiplying fractions is a fairly simple process. Let me show you how it works with number one. So number one, we have one half times five fourths. What we're going to do is simply multiply the numerators. That's the top part of this expression. So the top part, that's the numerator. And then we're going to multiply that by the denominator. That's the bottom part. So we have two times four in the bottom. Another way to say it is top times top, bottom times bottom. That's a simple way to remember. So in the top, we just simply have one times five, which is five. And then two times four, which is eight. And this is our answer. It does say that we need to express in lowest terms. What does that mean? That means if our numerator and denominator share any factors, okay? For example, the factors of five, five and one, the factors of eight are eight and one, four and two. If they share any factors, then that means we need to divide by those common factors. They don't for this example. So we're all set, that's in lowest terms, but that is the process, okay? Let's go ahead and do another one, show you how simple it is, multiplying fractions. So we have another one times five in the top, okay? One, whoops, that was a sloppy one. One times five in the top. In the bottom, we have four times three. So we're just gonna get five over 12. They have no common factors, so again, we're in lowest terms. Now before I get into how do we simplify if it's not lowest terms, let's take a look at some division. So with division, our process is fairly simple. Now you're thinking, oh, what do I do with division? We are gonna change it to multiplication first. How do we change it to multiplication? We use this process, keep, change, and flip. Now the reason why we can keep, change, flip is because this flip part means we're gonna change it to the reciprocal because dividing is equal to multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, so dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's why we can use keep, change, flip. Now, what do we do? Well, we're gonna keep this first fraction. Okay, I'm gonna use slightly different colors. Okay, I'm gonna try my best here. We're gonna keep this first fraction. We're gonna change it to division, or sorry, we're gonna change the division to multiplication. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this guy. Okay, he gets the same color. Okay, so keep, change, and flip. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep three halves. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here. Three halves. Three over two, I'm gonna keep that the same. Change, what do I change it to? Well, I'm gonna change it from division to multiplication. I'm gonna use a dot because when you're getting into algebra, the X looks like a variable, so we don't want that. So I'm just gonna use the dot. It still means multiplication. And then I'm gonna flip. Flipping means we're gonna change this guy to be the reciprocal. Reciprocal means the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. So instead of four over nine, it's gonna become nine over four. When we put that all together, let's use purple, we're gonna do the same process, top times top, that gives me 27, over bottom times bottom, that is eight, and this is our answer, 27 over eight. So. If we have division, we're gonna change it to multiplication as I suggested in the beginning. And then essentially we just have all multiplication problems, okay? That's our goal. Multiplying fractions is much easier and we'll get right into it. So let's go ahead and apply that principle here. We're going to keep this first fraction. This is number seven. We're gonna keep this first fraction. We're gonna change it from division into multiplication. And then we are going to flip this to become the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and do that process. So we have 11 over two, we're gonna keep the same. We're gonna change this to multiplication. And then we are going to flip this fraction to become two over one, keep, change, and flip. Now we have 11 times two, which is 22, over two times one, which is two. Now, this is the part of the video where I wanna talk about how do we simplify fractions if they have common factors. So let me express why these have common factors really quickly first. Okay, so 22, its factors are 22 and one, and also what, 11 and two. Two has factors of 
just two and one. That's the only thing they can multiply together. Notice how they have a buddy. They have this two in common. So that means we can divide the top. Let's try to use the same colors here. We can divide the top and the bottom by two because they have that four, a common factor. What happens when we divide the top and bottom by the same thing? Well, we're gonna get 11 over one, which is just 11, okay? So 11's our answer here, 11 over one, same thing. But that's how we simplify. Let's try to find a couple more that we can simplify. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna look for some multiplication ones first. Okay, number 13. Now couple different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you how we can multiply first and then and then simplify later. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to show you how we can do it before we multiply to make our life a little bit easier. So 14 times 7 in the top. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use a calculator. So 14 times 7 is 98. That's not a commonly known multiplication fact. And then we have 90 in the bottom. If they're both even numbers, which they are, we know that have at least one common factor of two, okay? So we have some work to do. We need to do some simplification. Well, we're gonna divide by two as I suggested, and we can go from there if they have more common factors. So if I divide this by two, I'm gonna get 49, and then if I divide that by two, I get 45. I know 49 only has seven and seven. Then for 45, I have nine and five, and that's pretty much it. So this is simplified, 49 over 45. Now, let's say you're like, oh man, I don't know 14 times seven. I don't have a calculator with me. What can I do? Well, what we can do is we can do some simplification before we multiply. If we see that one of the numbers in the top has a common factor with one of the numbers in the bottom, then we can simplify it before we multiply, okay? What does that look like? Well, I notice that they have the same factor. This is seven times two, this is five times two. There's that two I'm talking about again, okay? So what I can do right away is I can divide this guy by two and I can divide this guy by two. Oftentimes you'll see just like this, they cross it off and then they change the number, but I'm gonna keep it like this for now. So when we do that, we're gonna do 14 divided by two, we get seven which is seven over nine. We're gonna keep that multiplication the same, and then seven in the top over five. Well, now this is a much easier problem. We have 49 over 45, and there's our answer. So that's another way to simplify. Honestly, that's my preferred method is to cross off before I multiply, and it makes it much easier. Applying that same principle to number 14, if we cross off 15 and six, they have a common factor of three. If I divide 15 by three, I get five, and if I divide six by three, I get two. So now the problem is five over eight times seven over two, much easier to do. We have 35 over 16, and that's our final answer. Let's do another division one to finish this off. I'm trying to find one that has common, ah, here's a good one. So I'm gonna change this, keep, change, flip, keep, change, flip, that's simple. Now it's a multiplication problem. Now, before I multiply, I would prefer, because these have a common factor of two. Two goes into two, two goes into four, and I'm gonna rewrite this problem as 13 over two and times one over one. Well, I know anything times one just itself, so this is gonna stay as 13 over two. See how this complicated problem becomes much more simple just from doing some simplifying first. That's all I have for this video. If you have any questions on it, make sure to leave a comment. This is a math drills video, so make sure to check out their website. They have tons of great worksheets available. I have a playlist of all math drills worksheets if you wanna check that out. I have tons of other topics also on this channel, and you'll be sure to find that here next time on West Explains Best.